Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, let's create this uh, really interesting shot, an animation shot of a character uh, pushing something uh, super heavy, like a heavy box across the screen. And the goal of this exercise is just to dive even deeper into keyframe animation and just playing around, uh, playing around with yet another new uh, rig. So for this exercise, let's go ahead and download this free uh, crate and you can find the link in the um, in, uh, in the descriptions of this video. And the reason I chose this crate is because if I press download, I can see that um, there's an FBX version, right? And that's just uh, something easier um, that we don't have to convert uh, into Maya, right? I can import FBX right in. And if you ever grab any other assets on Sketchfab that are not um, you know, that, that you don't have FBX or OBJ, you can of course use uh, GLTF uh, or GLB and just uh, first import them into Blender and then export them out as FBX. So you can always convert that. But um, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to find something that already has the FBX. And this asset, uh, just a simple box, right? Nothing uh, special. But this simple box was created by DJ uh, Mason. I think that's how you pronounce it. But uh, anyways, uh, there's going to be a link. And for our character today, uh, let's do something super special. I'm really excited about this. I, uh, on Twitter, right? Oh, by the way, I wanted to mention this. I, I don't usually bring this up in my videos, but I would really appreciate if uh, anyone who's watching this would give me a follow on Instagram and uh, Twitter, right? I'm uh, attempting to grow my uh, reach and I'm not uh, doing very well as far as uh, marketing those uh, social media platforms, but it would be really nice to kind of start building a little larger following so I can uh, communicate to you guys better about you know new tutorials and new things that I'm doing. So I would really appreciate that. But um, I just recently started honestly using Twitter again, and I found this amazing artist uh, named Keel Figgins, and he is absolutely mind blowing. So if you just look at his uh, IMDb. The movies that he worked on, uh, Marvels, Avatar, Jurassic World, Jurassic World, Eternal, Spider-Man, Aladdin, Ready Player One, Guardians of the Galaxy, Assassin's Creed, Doctor Strange. I mean, the list cannot, you cannot possibly get larger than this. And luckily for us, uh, Keel actually uh, gives away free uh, rigs that we can use. And uh, for that reason, I'm going to provide a link to his uh, website. And if you go to his website, if we click uh, click on his resume, we can see that he is currently an associate animation supervisor uh, living in London. So that's uh, really cool. And you, you can click on his reel. You can see some of the reels that he worked on. Uh, again, I find this incredibly impressive, um, inspiring and motivating. I hope you do too. So look around his website. You can see his accomplishments and you can of course follow him on Twitter as well. If you go to the store section, in here, there are some uh, amazing rigs that you can purchase that uh, Kiel sells. And these are uh, incredible, and I'm sure I'll be using some of these in the future as well. But for this exercise, let's go ahead and uh, go into the free stuff. And in free stuff, there's a few uh, amazing ones as well that we can just start playing with. And one of them is, I'm just going to literally grab the first one. Um, this animation rig, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Raphael, right? I'm just going to simply download it. So go ahead and do the same. And once you grab uh, Raphael and you grab your crate, let's go ahead and meet in uh, Maya. All right, so here I am back in Maya. So to get started, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File. And um, I like to do this with you. And the reason I'm doing it for, for uh, every step, literally, that's why I call these step by step, is because sometimes uh, just even simple... Uh, things like importing assets or opening something for the first time could create a few little things that you need to know. And I always assume that whoever's watching these videos uh, maybe is brand new, have never done it before. And sometimes the simplest questions can uh, create uh, headaches. So that's the reason I'm doing it step by step. So I'm going to go ahead and say open scene. And one of the files that you will see uh, once you um, download Raphael, is that you're going to see there's something uh, in there called Game Ready. So I'm going to select that one and I'm going to say Open. All right, once the character comes in, um, you can see what I'm seeing. And one of the things that I'm uh, experiencing on my end um, is I'm missing textures. What would be the uh, best way to activate textures on a asset that I just downloaded? 
So the smartest way to do this, you have to assume that there's going to be multiple maps um, for this character, right? So if it's just one, something like a crate, for example, and we'll do that in one second as well, you can just simply select the mesh, right click, go to material attributes. And in here, usually you can just go and hunt down the texture file that is linked in the color, right? But a lot of times you will have assets that have multiple um, things, right, assigned. So you'll have pieces that have maybe different uh, color maps, maybe some of them have normal maps or bump maps, and that would just be way too time consuming to click on each piece and try to find the textures for them, right? So there's an easier way to do this. The way you can do it is you can just go to Windows, and then you can go to General Editors, and in here you have something called File Path Editor. If you select that, um, in here you will see this red uh, symbol indicating all the textures that are currently broken in this character. So if I say repath, and then I just simply browse to the file that I downloaded from Keel, just say repath, you should see uh, automatically this change to uh, green, right? And it says uh, all the uh, issues have been resolved, right? So now if I close this, you can see all the texture maps have automatically kind of uh, populated themselves, right? If I select something and press F, I can kind of uh, center this character and I can rotate it and kind of admire and uh, check out this uh, beautiful character. Now this uh, character comes in with a readme uh, txt file, which you can open and see. And one of the things that I want to point out is the fact that the concept art for this was done by uh, Nicola. The model, the 3D modeling was created by Kenny. And then the rig was done by uh, Kiel, right? So keep that in mind. That's uh, important to give artists their credit. And maybe you can check out their art station uh, for their hard work. And in the notes, um, there are specific notes that um, are given uh, to us. So you're welcome to kind of look through these as well. My intention is just to uh, simply kind of investigate, research, and literally just play, just have fun, right? So that's uh, all I'm, I'm trying to do. Um, let's take a look at some of these controllers and see what does this mean? Because initially when you first open this up, and especially if that's the first time you open up a Rick character, this could seem uh, a little bit overwhelming, right? So let's talk about this. If we select the bottom one and go to our uh, channel box, you can see the name of each one, right? So this guy right here is gonna be the uh, world uh, controller, right? If I click, for example, on this one, uh, I can see that this is gonna be the left foot controller. And obviously, if I select on that and press W, I can move this aside and you can see that it's actually moving the leg, right? So that's uh, kind of basic understanding. I can also see that there's gonna be uh, these knee controllers, right? So you can control which way the knee is facing. That's gonna be true for most of the rigs that you guys download. Now, what makes this uh, rig a little more complex than a couple previous ones that we looked at is that it has some additional things. Uh, in addition to just simple controllers, there's just like these little uh, things next to each uh, part, right? That has even more stuff. And if you click on one of these, uh, think of this as like the like an activation uh, gadget for even more controllers. So for example, if I click on this one, I can see that this is a uh, left foot uh, pinner and in here you have all these different things, right? And that's gonna be uh, the case for this one too as well. And uh, let's see what else can we uh, look at. So that's what these little blue ones are. Like they're little collections of giving you even more control over each section, right? So that's what they are. Um, but if I click on something like this yellow one and press uh, W and let's just attempt to kind of bring him down, we can see what that's looking like, right? So you can see by default, uh, this is really interesting. By default, the hands, right? The entire character is moving uh, with, with the uh, waist, right? but the hands are kind of play, uh, stuck in place. And the reason they're stuck in place in animation, this is something called IK or inverse kinematics, meaning these hands are not following the body like you would in forward kinematics, right? Forward kinematics means as I'm moving this, every single limb is gonna follow it, right? Let me go ahead and do that. And let's really um, understand the difference between IK and uh, FK or inverse kinematics and forward kinematics. That's kind of a really basic foundational understanding that you must know when you're getting into animation. 
So if you're doing something like a push-up, right, and your uh, hands are on the floor, um, you don't ever want to move those hands when you're animating something. So if, uh, you know, if they're on the floor and I'm doing a push-up, I want to make sure that I can animate the body, right, like, like he's doing a push-up, but the hands are always staying still. So if something is staying still or almost like pinned down, that's uh, what you might think of as inverse, right? So it's, in, it's, it's backwards. But if you say forward kinematics, that would be useful for like an action base, like he's fighting or maybe he is running, right? For that, uh, I would definitely want to have the hands always follow his entire body. And then I would switch it to forward kinematics. So um, one of the questions right away when you open the new rig is what how do you switch between forward and inverse right so uh, that's what this little controller is here on the side so if i click on this i can see on the very top that it says ik or fk right right now we already know this is set to ik so uh, if i select this and then middle mouse dr uh, drag to the right you can see all these controllers showed up and they are not here so this means now just switch to fk so this is forward kinematics so now if I grab the same controller as before and attempt to move the body, you can see that the uh, his right side is still an IK, but now his left side is an uh, FK. All right, so that's how you control uh, that. So that's pretty, pretty simple. It's just a little switch. And for our exercise, um, I think I'm gonna leave it actually in IK because I want him to be pushing that box and when he's pushing the box I want to make sure that the hands are going to be kind of stuck on the box right so they're still so I'm going to leave that in there so I'm going to leave that in IK all right let's see what else can we uh, play with if we click on this thing here and try to move it around you can see that's going to be his chest very cool if I select this here and try to move it up and down that's going to be his shoulders Amazing. You can see on the bottom there's a couple weapons. I'm not planning in this video specifically uh, using these, but maybe in our future video we can, right? Um, let's just simply click on this yellow line. Um, now, check this out. If I click on the middle of the knife, you can see the mesh is being selected, and that's going to be true uh, if I click on any of the any of the meshes on this character. Let's say I don't want to, right? I want. I really want to focus on just selecting the controllers because I'm not modeling. There's really no reason for me to ever select the mesh. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to turn off select surface objects. And now if I click uh, anywhere, even in the middle, right? Uh, it's not going to do anything until I click on the yellow outline. And now it's going to select the knife. Now if I select his weapon, right? Um, let's check this out. So. We can try to move this uh, back and forth, and that's really cool. And you can see there's actually two of them, right? Um, one of the things that I've read in the documentation in that text file is that these are already automatically uh, have been positioned into place into his hands. And now we just have to kind of snap them in there if we wanted to. Now, again, I'm not gonna be using it, but I just wanna show you how that works. How do we uh, place these uh, weapons into his hands? Um, when it's already built into the rig. Well, um, if you look up here in the channel box in the controller, obviously there's two knives, it's gonna be A and B. So right now I'm just doing one of them. Um, right here, there's something called pinning. If I click on this and then middle mouse drag, I can see how the knife is kind of jumping around between a uh, different positions, right? So I can do chest, I can do a head, kind of his belt, and then there it is, right hand. So by default, this kind of jumped into place. And then of course, at this point, I could still adjust this if I wanted to, right? I can move it around. Let's do the same thing with this one just for fun. I'm gonna select this other one. And obviously this is gonna be called prop A. If I select the pinning and then middle mouse drag to the left, it's gonna to go to uh, all these various places once again. And then it's gonna go uh, to the right hand or the left hand, right? So we want it in the left hand. So now there it is. Now he has two of these knives. And let's say you're creating kind of a fun animation. You can uh, select this controller here and let's just go ahead and just for fun, switch this to FK. I'm gonna do that on both of them. And now if I grab this and try to move it around, you can see that the knives are gonna be in his hands and uh, that's gonna be really cool, right? Now you can just have him do some kind of a fighting uh, scene. And then of course, if you did end up uh, doing that, uh, maybe one of the things 
and again we'll show we'll we'll see how um, we could do this in our next video but we can always uh, press E adjust this a little better we can even grab some of these controllers here and start kind of closing his uh, hand right so it looks like he's holding the weapon a little bit better so we can do that and as I'm adjusting this, right, even though I adjusted the position because this is parented uh, to his wrist, that means it's going to uh, maintain its uh, position, right? So even though I adjusted it, you can see how this one is going through his hand, but this one is better, right? Um, it's going to retain kind of that position. So right now he's kind of, I think, a little bit drunk. So uh, very cool. I just want to kind of show you the basics, right? I love playing around with this stuff. It's so much fun. Let's go ahead and uh, put everything back. I uh, And what if I wanted to turn these off? Maybe I'm gonna do something that um, doesn't require the weapons. Could I turn these off? How would I do that? Well, let's uh, see what else we got. So we have, uh, we have a head pinner, right? And what does that mean? Um, if I select this head, for example, and press W and try to move this up, you can see that the head is not moving up. It's kind of stuck in place. I can of course move it forward, right? I can press E and I can also rotate it, which is really cool. But what if I'm making kind of a stretchy, squishy animation and I wanna press W and I really wanna move the head up, right? Um, I can select this and uh, on the right in the channel box, you will find something called neck translate. If I select neck uh, translate and then middle uh, mouse drag to set it to one, right? Now, if I press uh, W and uh, attempt to move the neck or the head, right, you can see that the neck is going to be stretching with the head. So you can create kind of a, this rig has also kind of a squashy, stretchy stuff in if you know how to use it. And uh, for our stuff, we don't really need to. So I'm actually going to turn that off. And I just wanted to show you that that's there, right? If we click on this uh, thing on top, you can see that that's actually called control uh, visibility. And in here, you can see there's a list of different controllers that are, cur are currently not visible, right? They're set to zero, but they, there is an additional uh, option to animate things. So for example, let's say you're doing a close-up shot of this guy and you want to, I don't know, let's say you want to move his or animate his bandana because there's, you know, he's on top of the mountain and it's windy, right? Well, what I could do is I can find the bandana in the control visibility uh, section and that's right here. If I select that, and then I'll do middle mouse drag to the right, you can see that these controllers showed up, which means if I select one of these and press E, I can now animate the uh, bandana as I wish, right? I can, I can rotate it, I can press W, and maybe I wanna stretch it so there's like a little wind, right? Whatever you want. So keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and go back here. All right, for now, let me just select this. Let me go to bandana, let's turn that off. Um, let's say I want him uh, speaking or talking, or maybe I want him to open up his mouth, right? Um, are there any controllers for the mouth? And there are. You can see there's one for the jaw, teeth, and the mouth. Let's go ahead and turn mouth on. We can see what that looks like. And again, let's just play with it. Let's just select one and see what that looks like. That gives us precise control of each section. So that's pretty awesome, right? I'm going to turn that one off. Let's take a look at the jaw and turn that on. Now, if I select the lower jaw and press E, I can uh, see that that's actually going to um, allow me to move his jaw, which is really cool. We can have him chewing gum or maybe yelling, right? That's pretty, uh, pretty incredible. Uh, very cool. Let's go ahead and see what else we got. I'm going to actually leave this one on just in case. So clearly you can see there's eyes, we have brows, right? Uh, we even have a pouch in the belt and the shell. Let's look at the shell and turn that one on. Uh, let's see what that does. So the shell controller, if I select that and press W, I can actually control the position of the shell, which is really cool. Um, now you might want to be careful with this actually, because if you move this back and look at his back, uh, for optimization purposes, because this is a game character, uh, any hidden geometry uh, is usually deleted in game characters, right? So um, that might not be the best idea to move the shell out. So let me actually put that back. And for that reason, I don't even see the point of this. Uh, if you press E 
you know you can rotate it maybe sometimes so that's there right so that's important to uh, for us to know just in case so let me turn the shell off we have a tail controller we can uh, control his little tail down here and so on so I think that's enough right you get the idea um, all right let's go ahead and uh, turn off the uh, weapons right for this exercise I don't really want to use them before I, before I turn them off, I actually want to uh, put them back into place. So I'm going to put it back in the scene. Let me do that for both of them. And just drag it all the way to the right. All right, so to hide this, let's do this. Let's just activate our uh, mesh for a second. Let's just select um, everything that has to do with the weapons. And uh, right here in the channel box, I'm just going to create a layer. And let's just uh, call this maybe weapons. All right, I'm going to say save and I'm just going to simply hide my weapons layer. So I'm not really interested in uh, animating uh, those in this exercise. All right, uh, very cool. So how do we get started? So the uh, first thing I would uh, encourage you to do is do control alt S and uh, save your work. And when you do control alt, it's going to give you um, an increment in your saves. So as you're progressing with your animation, you can go from one, two, two, three, four, and so on, right? It's just a good practice um, if you want to do that. If not, you can just do Control S and then just save and overwrite the original file, right? So it's, it's up to you. But um, the first thing I would like to do is you can see that, uh, at least in my case, right, the grid is really small. And uh, we can, of course, drop in a plane and have him kind of stand on the plane uh, and maybe drag something. But just for fun, uh, it would be cool to make this a little bit larger as well. How do we do that? Well, you can go to display grid options and in here by default, it's currently set to uh, 12 by five. And these are our units, right? And you might say, what are units? Well, these are Maya units. And then you have to specify what are your uh, units set to. So is it meters? Is it centimeters? Is it yards? Is it inches, right? So units just means you, you decide what they are. You know, what is this? Uh, where's the scene taking place, right? So uh, you can always go to your settings and in here, if you look in under uh, settings, uh, you can see that the working units are gonna be up to you. So you decide what they are, right? So I'm, I'm not gonna mess with this because I don't know if that's gonna affect the rig. Uh, so I'm gonna leave it in uh, by default in the centimeters, but just, that's what that is, right? So you decide what the units are. Um, so I just want to make this grid larger, right? So I'm just going to go to like, instead of 12, let me do 120 by even 50. Let's just see what that looks like and say apply. And that's just a little bit better, right? But maybe let me do another one. So I'll do 1200 by 500. And I think that's a little bit better. That just feels like the character is in some kind of a uh, environment that makes sense. Okay, uh, very cool. That doesn't really mean anything. It's just for visual, right? So I'm going to say close. Uh, nice. Next, I would like to bring in that box that we just uh, downloaded from Sketchfab. Uh, how do we do that? Let's go ahead and do file import. I'm going to find my crate, go to source, and here it is, the FBX. I'm just going to say import. All right. So it also comes in without the textures, even though I have my texture button uh, turned on, right? If I turn that on. Uh, you can see it's not uh, working. So just like we did before, let's go to Windows, let's go to General, let's look at the File Path Editor and see if there we, we see any red uh, X's and we do, right? Uh, right here. So let's go ahead and select that and let's do a repath and of course find the box textures. So just like before, I'm gonna find my textures folder. I'm gonna go in there and you know what? Actually, I don't need to go in there. I'm just gonna select it and say Set. And if I say repath, Maya should automatically fix the issue um, on your end as well. It did for me. Uh, very cool. Now we have this box and we have a character. Uh, let's decide if we uh, are happy with the box or if we want to do anything to it. One of the things I'm not liking as I spin this is I don't really want this to reflect any light. Um, how do I fix that? Well, if I select my box, right click and go to material attributes, uh, let's go and click on the crate and let's take a look and see. So there's all this PBR um, goodness that is plugged into this box. It has the color map, it has the normal map, it has specular uh, things. I don't want it to be so shiny. Uh, so one of the things I could do is I can actually adjust my specular color. 
I'm gonna turn it all the way off. I don't really want it to reflect any light. All right, uh, another thing I wanna make sure, I'm gonna press space bar, and uh, I want to make sure that my box is uh, actually is uh, on the floor. Right now it looks like it's way below the floor. So I'm gonna press W, and let me just move this onto the floor, and I'm also going to move it in front of the character. So he's gonna be pushing this box, right? So I'm gonna put it right here for a minute. And uh, let's hover over perspective view, press space bar to go into it. And now let's decide if we wanna do anything else to this box. We can uh, pump up the ambient color if we want it to be a little bit lighter, maybe it's a little bit too dark. I actually wouldn't mind if the box was a little bit warmer. Um, I'm not really rendering any of this, but um, I'm a strong believer that when you are animating or just playing, even just playing around, uh, even if you're doing it by yourself, it's always fun to play and learn and see if you can adjust things and kind of create uh, elements and assets that look nice to you. And uh, I think that's going to be helpful on, in just loving what you do and just kind of customizing the props a little more to your liking, right? So one of the things I would like is because if you look at the characters, he's kind of very warm, uh, like you have this kind of an orangey yellow feel to it. This feels a little bit too cold, so I wouldn't actually mind pumping a little red into it. So I'm going to go into my ambient color and then instead of uh, it being gray, I'm gonna switch this to maybe a little bit of a red, and just give it a little bit of a tint. So I think this works. Um, let's go ahead and start uh, messing with this. So to get start with, started with the animation, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, select all of the controllers for this guy. And as you, as you can see right now, when I drag that, it's also selecting the mesh. Uh, just like I showed you guys before, let's turn off the mesh so it's not selectable. I only want to select the controllers. So I'm going to select all of these and um, I'm going to set a key for all of them. So I'm going to press S. And let's go into our channel box so we can kind of keep an eye on what's going on here, right? So this red line appeared and all of these are selected. So I know that every single controller um, is now uh, keyed in, right? Uh, another thing I'm going to make sure before I start animating is that I'm going to make sure that my auto keyframe toggle is on, which means every single time outside of, uh, you know, anywhere on the timeline, if I move a controller by uh, default, Maya is going to set a key. And let me show you how that works. So if I grab, for example, this main controller in the bottom, press W and just simply move it right, just a little bit and then let it go. You can see Maya by default created a keyframe for me, so I didn't have to press uh, S. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. A lot of times I'll press S anyways, just because uh, already kind of a subconscious uh, habit, but just so you know, that's what that means. All right, I'm gonna go back to zero and let's start uh, by posing our character into the pose of him uh, kind of leaning into the box, right? So how do we do that? Well, for now, I'm gonna select this box, let's go ahead and click on the crate in the outliner, and let's also put it on its own layer, and just so we can control it really easy, I'm gonna call this crate, let's call this wooden uh, crate, and I'm gonna say save, and now I'm gonna actually hide that as well, just so I can focus on the character uh, by itself initially. All right, so now uh, we talked about the IK and FK, if he's pushing a box and his hands are leaning on the box, do you guys think he should be using the FK or IK? Do we want forward kinematics or inverse kinematics? Um, well, the right answer is inverse, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch this back. Select uh, this controller, hold on the shift key, select this one, go up here into our channel box, click on our IK FK, and then uh, middle mouse drag to the uh, left, and that's going to switch this back to uh, IK mode, right? Uh, very nice. Now let's go ahead and click both of, uh, on these boxes, the main ones, press W, and let's just start kind of moving this into position of him extending his arms and essentially getting into a uh, moving my big box position, right? All right, let's grab this one here and let's just start kind of moving it into somewhat uh, correct position, right? Let's go ahead and do, the, do that with this one as well. And I'm doing them uh, one at a time because this way maybe we can get more of a kind of an organic feel, right? Maybe sometimes when you're doing this kind of stuff, you don't always want everything to be 100% symmetrical. Uh, keep that in mind, that's kind of important. Uh, it will always make your work better if something is not uh, symmetrical. 
let's just do a little bit better job uh, moving the hands into position. And if we wanted to, we can also, of course, turn the crate on. And if we wanted to move it, right, because this button is unchecked, we can't select it. So how do I move this crate if I can't select it? Well, in the outliner, I can. I can still click and uh, select it in the outliner and move it into position. And my from the top view, let me just make sure that it kind of makes sense. Okay. Um, if we wanted to uh, maybe get his fingers kind of over the uh, crate, I think that would be kind of cool, right? Let's go ahead and do that. So let me spend a, a few minutes just kind of aligning the fingers. So maybe I want this one here and I want this one kind of pressing in. And let's go ahead and do the same thing with this one. Just put, I'm gonna just press this one down. So now I kind of ha have this uh, kind of a cool hand gesture that I like. I'm gonna select the thumb and let me just adjust the thumb and make sure that makes sense as well. All right, I think that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and work on our uh, right hand and do the same thing. I'm gonna put this into position. Let's grab this kind of an index finger and move it down. And let, let's make sure it doesn't go uh, through the box too much, right? And uh, with this, I'm just gonna grab this here and just kind of put it down. And I somewhat created kind of a different feel, right? It feels a little bit different on both. And maybe this one is a little too, too much in the air. Ah, nice. Okay, cool. So now we have this. Next, let's go ahead and uh, also move his legs, right? So for the legs, I'm going to grab my move. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab his left foot and just move it back. As I'm moving it back, you can see the toes are starting to bend, which is really, really cool. But then the leg is starting to lift off the ground, right? So for me to make it look like this is heavy, I'm going to grab the uh, middle and I'm going to start bringing him down like this, like he's actually pushing, right? And I want to make sure that his elbows are uh, straight or uh, just a little bit bent, just a little bit. And this is going to allow us to give us kind of this uh, motion of him pushing a little bit, right? So I'm going to initially make it uh, straight just like this. Let's again grab this leg and push it back. And that's going to give us that feel of um, it's heavy, right? We can even take this and maybe move it forward a little bit and very carefully just start kind of posing this guy. Now, one of the things you might notice um, on your end is that there is a ripping happening between the shoulders. All right, so luckily we already know that uh, we have a shell controller, right? So let's kind of bring that back and help us. So I'm gonna select this uh, top here and let's go ahead and go to shell and let's activate the controllers for the shell. Now I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna move this in to kind of hide that uh, hole there, right? That works, very cool. Another thing that I can do is because this is heavy, maybe he takes his head and let's press E and it's kind of down, right? So he's kind of really leaning into it. So I think this is gonna be my initial first uh, pose for starting the animation. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. And because we were moving all of these on the initial um, keyframe zero, we didn't have to key anything, right? We're still working with all these preset keys that we set. So um, it's all ready to go. All right, so what would be the next step? So um, initially, before he actually begins to move anything, um, his position or the crate's position, uh, let's just kind of create the loop of him pushing it in in uh, in one place, and then what I'm planning on doing is just taking the controller and moving it forward, and that's going to create the illusion of him moving something. But the animation itself is just going to be uh, kind of created in place initially, right? That's going to be I think the easiest way for us to manage this. Again, make sure you select all the controllers. That's really important. You want to select all of them. Right click, say copy. And let's just decide how long we want our animation to be. 
it's currently set to 24 frames per second on my computer, so I um, advise you to do the same. Set it to 24. And uh, here, let's just do something like, let's just double this. I'm gonna do, um, let's set this to maybe like 100. And I, the reason I want it to be 100 is because I want him to be pushing this kind of slowly, right? I really want to create an illusion of this box being heavy, right? So uh, 100 frames uh, at, four, at 24 frames per second should be perfect. And we can always adjust it if we needed to. So I'm going to copy this, go to frame 100, and I'm going to paste this. All right. Now, what, we, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to frame 50. And let's just simply switch these legs around. So now I'm going to take this one and I'm going to move this back where the other one is like this. And honestly, this is a cool pose as well, right? Uh, very cool. And remember, we do have controller for the tail. Uh, and then I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to move this forward. All right. All right. Very cool. If we press play, we can see what the timing is, so it really feels like it's heavy, right? Because it's kind of in slow motion. And that's what I was going for. I think that um, works really well. If you wanted to speed this up, maybe it's a little bit too slow. How do we control the speed, right? Before we get too far into the animation, uh, this would be a good time to decide if we like the speed at which he is pushing the box. So maybe I want it just a little bit faster, right? What I could do is I can select, uh, let's go ahead and select again all of the controllers and holding down the shift key, I can click on this keyframe and I can just simply drag it to be just a little bit faster. Maybe instead of 100, I'm gonna go to 70, okay? And uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the uh, right foot, hold down the shift key, select the left foot, then hold down the shift key and click on this 50 here and I'm gonna move this to about halfway, which is 35. So now I just changed my seg segment from 0 to 100 to be 0 to 70, which means I should adjust my timeline. I'm going to switch this to 70 as well. And now if I press play, he should move his speed just a little bit faster. Very nice. I like that. So instead of him uh, skiing, maybe one of the things we could do is have him uh, la uh, lift up uh, his feet as he's changing the positions, right? Um, one of the really important things I want to point out uh, that you need to understand is that when the um, auto keyframe toggle is on, right, this keyframe 35 was set by us dragging our um, foot back and forth, which means if you look at the uh, channel box, you can see there's these uh, red uh, translations for X and Z, and they are red. And the other ones are kind of this pink color. Now, if I go to frame zero, you can see that they are all red, right? Which means the keyframes for uh, this foot, right, have been set for uh, translation and rotation values of this foot. But because we moved this uh, manually to set this keyframe, uh, for this, it's only the translation values of moving back and forth. So for me to uh, make this uh, work, right? If I wanna lift this foot up in the air, um, I need to also make sure that the rotation of this is red as well. So what does that mean? If I select the uh, foot and press S manually on the keyboard, watch what happens to these keys. They all turn red, right? So it means all of these have been keyed. And I need that in order for me to lift the foot up to uh, kind of maintain this position on zero and 35 without messing it up. So now since I have that, I'm gonna go halfway to about maybe 18. And what I could do is I can press uh, S, press W, and I'm gonna move this foot up, like he's lifting it. I'm gonna press E and also move this this way. All right, so now what's gonna happen is he's going to, uh, as he's moving his foot forward, instead of sliding it, he's gonna lift it up in the air and then he's gonna plop it down. So now we have this kind of uh, almost like a walking starting animation, right? And that's what I want. And now uh, right here, I don't mind him sliding because he's kind of pushing it back, right? So now if I press play, you can see what that looks like. Now, one of the things you might uh, want is, is maybe he's putting his foot um, a little bit faster in the beginning, right? So for that, we can adjust our 
um, curves for the animation. Let's go into the animation uh, workspace and let's take a look at the curves for this guy, right? So if I press play, you can see um, what the curve looks like. And if you drag this manually, you can also kind of control uh, what's happening here, right? So let's say I want this, I like how this is kind of dragging back slowly, but maybe right here, I kind of want this to be a little bit faster, right? And I can also adjust the uh, tangent of this as well, right? I can select these, for example, and change how they're easing in and easing out. For example, maybe I, I could change it to spline and I can see what that looks like if that changes anything. So if we look on the left here, I can go to Y and I can go to Z. Now on Z, I know that this is gonna be uh, moving back and forth. And the reason I know that is because I can, if I look on this gizmo here, right, you can see that Z is this way. So that means if I select this and middle mouse drag this, I can actually control the timing of this, right? So maybe I want to make this a little bit uh, faster and snappier. Well, I can uh, put this a little bit closer to the front and I can actually change the tangents of this as well, right? I can control these lines by middle. Uh, if you drag a selection over these, then middle mouse drag, you can actually control um, some of this uh, here as well. And now if I press play, you can see that the timing is a little bit different, right? He kind of moves forward faster and then he kind of slows down a little bit again. So you have full control over the uh, motion and the timing of your uh, animation by using curves. Curves are super important to control all of these values, right? All right, another thing I can do is I can select this uh, keyframe and I can break the tangents. If I break the tangents, that's gonna uh, allow me to control each one of these handles um, individually, right? So if I select the right side, for example, and start dragging it down, you can see how that's going to change um, the animation dram dramatically, right? So let's say I'll do something like this and press play. You can see what that's gonna do, right? It's gonna really change how the leg is behaving. Instead of going down, if I push this up, you can see what that's gonna do. All right, so now let's go, let me just select all of these and I'll switch it back to spline so it kind of cleans it up and we can see if we like this, I think it's fine, but you can adjust this and you have lots of lots of lots of control, all right? Uh, to, uh, to keep going, let's go ahead and do the other foot, right? So I'm gonna rotate the character uh, this way and let's do exactly the same thing on this foot. So I'm gonna select this. And uh, again, if I go to 35, you can see that I need to set keys for this. So I'm gonna press S. And what I'm gonna do here is as he moves the leg into position, same thing. I'm gonna press uh, S again, press W, move this up, press E, and let's go ahead and rotate his uh, foot. And now we should have something very similar to the other side, right? He kind of raises his uh, foot up and then he plops it down and then he kind of drags it back. Let's go ahead and keep going. Let's see what else we got. Now, since we have him, uh, now, since we have the legs animated, right? Another thing that we can uh, add to our animation is, uh, let's just decide on the head, um, what happens, or you know what, let's do the um, the waist, right? So right now we don't really have any um, anything going on with the waist. As, the, uh, as he's kind of bringing his left foot forward, right? Right here, maybe we can press S and we can also adjust, uh, move in with the leg, right? So the leg is coming forward and the whole body is pushing forward as well, right? So he's going like this. And then as he slides back, let's maybe press uh, E and let's just maybe push back a little more. All right, let's press play and see how that's looking. So it feels like he's kind of really struggling, right? And right here, I'm actually not happy with the fact that the arms are completely um, locked into a straight arm. So I'm gonna adjust this a little bit and see if that's a little bit better. Yeah, I think that's pretty good, all right? We can of course make it better, but I'm just kind of showing you the, uh, the basics. 
One of the uh, things about these animations is that you can spend uh, 15 minutes arriving to something that looks pretty good, and then you can spend another few days making it insane and perfect and amazing. So uh, very important point. So I'm just kind of showing you the basics of the simple, right? So, all right, so another thing we can do is let's grab the head and do the same thing, right? Let's talk about this. As he moves forward, he's really putting all this mess in. So I'm gonna also grab his head and move it down, right? So he's really pushing in. And then right here, he's kind of struggling. So it kind of starts to maybe slide a little bit. And in here, let's just move the head back up. And then now uh, let's play our animation. Very cool. Right now it feels very robotic, right? The timing of it is very um, precise and evenly spaced. So a lot of times you wanna play with your tangents or mess up the timing. Uh, obviously this doesn't, uh, this doesn't feel right. Maybe I can move it over here. All right, I think that's pretty good. Now uh, let's do the uh, next step, which is going to be moving actually him, uh, you know, in, in, in space, right? What would be the uh, easiest way to animate it? I think let's just assign both of these to a uh, locator and then we'll just animate the locator moving both the box and the main controller. So how do we do that? I'm going to go to create. I'm going to drop in a locator and then I'm going to grab the crate. Middle mouse drag the uh, crate into the locator. And now if I open this up, you can see what that looks like, right? And I'm gonna do the same thing with this. I'm gonna grab this uh, main controller and I'm gonna middle mouse drag it into the locator, okay? Now if I click on the locator, you can see they're both being uh, selected and there's no animation on this, which means I can go to frame zero, press S, and let's just go to frame 70, press S. Let's go ahead and grab our uh, move and let's just literally move him uh, forward and for you to figure out how much uh, forward to move it, um, you're gonna have to play the animation and see if it makes sense as far as him sliding or not on the ground right so if I press play I can see that this is moving way way too fast and too far obviously right so his initial point was here I moved him here that doesn't make sense let's go ahead and reduce that and see if that's a little bit better that's clearly better, but not enough, right? I'm going to do the same thing. Just move this back again. And now this feels a little bit better, and it's just a matter of tweaking it. All right, so you just want to make sure that he doesn't slide uh, too much. All right, so I think something like this uh, makes sense. Next, uh, let's go ahead and select a camera or create a camera for our character. So I'm going to go ahead and create a camera and I'm just going to do a normal camera just literally drop it in and let's see if we can find it uh, it's currently not visible if it's not visible just go to show viewport and let's go ahead and turn on our lighting shading and rendering and cameras are going to be right here so I'm going to turn that on now I can see the camera just showed up if I press uh, R I can make my camera a little bit larger right I can see uh, what that looks like. I can also, of course, move it aside. And let's just decide what side we want to see our character from. Which way is he pushing? Is he pushing the box to the right? Or is he pushing it to the left? In my case, I'm gonna do something like this. I'm gonna press E. And let me just aim my camera to my uh, actor, right? So I'm gonna do that. Press W, move it into position. And now I wanna look through this camera so I can see what am I looking at. For that, I'm going to go to Panels, uh, and I'm going to choose Camera 1. All right, and here it is. Here's my shot. I can also turn on this little button here, Film Gate, so I can see the resolution. And uh, it's currently kind of square. And you know what? I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm done tweaking the animations for now, so let's just switch this back to uh, check the, change the workspace so we can have a, a more view of our um, viewport. And now to change the film gate, I'm not really happy with this. So I'm gonna go to settings and let me change this from uh, this to something different, right? Let's do something like 400 by 1200. I'm gonna say close. And honestly, it's actually this button here, which is gonna be the resolution gate. 
and I'm not happy with this either. So I'm gonna do, let's do 500, or let's do 600 and see what that looks like. Uh, I think that's a little bit better. All right, so this is what we have so far. Now, question, let's make this uh, a little bit more difficult. How do we make this so he continues to move off screen? Do we want to uh, reanimate everything again with the legs or can we loop the legs and move the box off screen to make it look like he keeps walking? So how do we do that? Um, to do this, what you need to do is you want to, let's go ahead and go back into the perspective view for a second. And let's talk about this. How do we loop the fact that he's animating, right? So uh, if I want to loop his animation, the cycle that we just created, what I need to do is I can select all of the controllers and then I can go to my graph editor and in here you can see this is the entire graph, right? And we currently have the animation going from 0 to 70. Let's say I want, I want to make this double the size. Instead of 70, I want to make this 140 frames. So now if I extend this, um, you can see that uh, obviously there's no animation going from 70 to 140, right? How do we uh, loop it? How do we create this so it continues to loop? It's really simple. All you need to do is again, make sure you have all the controllers selected. And then you just simply click on this button right here called um, Post Infinity. Now when I click on Post Infinity, you can see what's happening, right? There's like this faded version of the initial uh, keyframes or the curves. And what that's gonna do is if I press play, he's going to continue to play the animation, right? And that's amazing because that is gonna allow us to also control um, how far he is pushing the box, right? So let's do the same thing with the locator. I'm gonna click on the locator. And uh, one thing I just realized, the box should definitely be traveling. Um, you don't want to be uh, easing in and easing out. You want to make this linear, right? You wanna make sure that he's moving across um, distance in a linear fashion, not uh, easing in and out. So you want to make sure that this is linear. But one of the things I would like to do is I want to make this to be double uh, the size, right? So uh, again, I'm going to take this, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, 140. I'm going to press S and I'm going to literally just move the, the entire locator forward uh, even more, right? So we'll do something like that. All right. And uh, again, I wanna make sure this is linear as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this into a linear uh, line. You can see a straight line. And now if I go back to frame zero and press play, you should see our character pushing the box double the distance, which also means if we go back into our camera view and go back to make zero, it, right. make it a little better. I'm gonna click on my locator. I'm gonna actually delete this middle one and press delete. And what I would like to do is also, let me see if that's a little bit better. I feel like he's travel, traveling a little bit too fast. Let's go ahead and extend this to maybe 200. So we'll slow him down. All right, I'm gonna select uh, this key here, put it on 200, and now he should be moving much, much slower. Yeah, I think the speed is a little bit better. I still would like him to actually go off the camera. I'm not happy that uh, the animation ends of him being uh, in this position. So let me go to, let's go to our side view, uh, select, our, uh, select our locator, and I'm gonna press W, and I just need to keep adjusting this. I really want him to go off. Like that's the whole point of this animation. Um, I don't want him to be in the camera shot. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna uh, increase this to 300. And again, I'm gonna select the locator. Let's go ahead and expand our timeline. And you can see how it's just a bunch of little adjustments. Holding on the shift key, I'm gonna select my locator and just drag it all the way to 300. And let's take a look and see if this is a little bit better. All right, so check this out. Now we have something like this, he's dragging and the timing is a little bit better. There's still a lot of things I can improve, um, but it does feel like he's pushing something really heavy and he's exerting a lot of effort. And uh, that's um, kind of what I was going for. Now, one of the things I want to point out, uh, if I created this uh, loop, right, 
um, how would I, if I wanted to, right? Let's say in this shot, for whatever reason, I would like him, uh, the character, to look at the screen, right? How would I do that? Because if I adjust the animation and it's looping, right? I don't want him to continuously looking left every time he creates two steps, right? Um, so uh, it's a really interesting um, issue. And the way you would handle something like that, if you want to create an additional uh, animation on top of a looped uh, kind of a systematic animation, right? Um, what you could do is you could you could use animation layers. And let me show you how that works. It's actually really powerful and uh, very cool. Let's say right here, I'm gonna grab this uh, head controller and let's say I want him to look at the camera. Like maybe he wants to say hi to us, right? While he's, while he's working. So what I could do is I can go to the animation tab um, if you go to the channel box and here you'll see there's display and th that's what we've been using for our layers but there's also something called animation layers and if you go in here right um, again I'm gonna select the uh, head controller and I'm gonna say I'm gonna click on this button right here create layer from selected as soon as I uh, click on that you can see there's something called base animation and then there's the new brand new layer called animation layer and this one is gonna be empty right so what I could do is check this out I can, uh, let's scrub to like 180. I'm gonna set a key, I'm gonna press S. Um, that's gonna be the starting point of the head turning. And then he will look at us, we'll, so we'll turn his head in one second. And then he's gonna, right here, he should go back, right? Back to work. So I'm gonna press another uh, S to uh, set it uh, looking, you know, the proper way, right? Looking down. And now what I can do is I can go in between right here and um, I can press E. And I can literally just turn the head towards us. Like he's like, you know, he's looking at us like, oh man, I have to work today. So check this out. Now he's gonna go uh, past the camera. He's gonna look at us as, a, as an additional uh, animation layer segment on top of the loop. And then he's gonna slowly kind of turn his head back and go back to work. So now let's go ahead and review our animation and see how that's look how that looks. So the reason I'm showing you this is because layers are an amazing way to add complexity and build on top of the animation. And uh, it works really well with uh, even looped animations, right? And um, so that's pretty much it. I think um, I think this is a really great uh, exercise. This is probably a good st uh, place to stop, right? And we don't want to make it too long, but we kind of covered all the basics of um, using inverse kinematics and looping and we even touched on uh, uh, you know the animation layers we looked at the uh, at the rig and all these different things you can do so I hope you found this uh, useful I strongly encourage you to continuously play and you know the more you play the more you experiment uh, initially you know it doesn't it's not gonna look right but then over time it will get better and animation is just um, like anything else it's just a lot of practice and you just have to uh, also of course you can look up um, incredible references from films and your favorite you know 3d shows and you can try to replicate some of the uh, animation uh, segments that you're seeing in there and one of the cool things to think about animation especially if you're making a short or a story um, is everything is uh, split into little sections or little shots right so you know this scene right here is going to be just used for him pushing the box if i wanted you know if part of the story he was doing something else some other uh animation or emotion that would be a completely different scene with different you know um controllers activated and all of that stuff so keep that in mind so that you know something uh that's super complex could be broken into many many different scenes and sections and parts to, to kind of simplify each shot i hope that makes sense all right, again, thank you for joining me. Uh, please like and subscribe this video if you uh, want to see more of these and you find it useful. And uh, thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.